Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friendly professor at Johnson County Community College. And this short screencast is just to go over some of the good habits that I'm expecting you to deploy as you build your web pages for my class and hopefully build some habits that will serve you really well for your career as a web developer. The first thing you'll want to do in all the web pages, of course, is to create the correct doc type. This doc type is for HTML5, so we expect to see that as the first statement of every line. Secondly, in this class, I'm asking you to put your name and the current date as the second line, the second statement of every HTML page. Beyond that, then, of course, you'll have your required tags, including HTML, the head tags, and the body tags. And I'm also expecting you to have a basic wireframe on all your pages. And in this case, that's the header, the nav section, which isn't complete yet, the main section, and the footer section. Good web page development habits really start with organizing your folders. You'll want your folders on your local development machine to be organized by chapter and by project so that everything that you must submit for class is in its own folder. So that if you have to replace a file or replace a folder on the JCCC web server later, your local machine is organized exactly like the JCCC web server so that the files and folders sync directly. As far as folder and file names, you'll want to use all lowercase characters, no spaces, and no special characters. You'll be using the names specified in the exercises exclusively. I do not want you to drift from those names. I want you to use the exact names that the exercises request from you. But here are some of the habits that they incorporate that you should be aware of. You'll also want to use HTML5 semantic tags. And by semantic, we know that word means it has meaning. For example, when I list lowercase, no spaces, and no special characters as three attributes of good file and folder names, that's a list. It's an unordered list. It's not in any particular order. So I'm using UL and LI tags to mark up that content. I could have just as easily used P tags, paragraph tags, to get that content to render on the page. But because it makes more sense as an unordered list, it should be coded as an unordered list. That's what semantic means. Use the tag that describes the content best. Of course, you're going to use the wireframe tags. And here are a few of them in all of your pages. You're going to use good indentation in your code. See, we can indent our code in a different way than the code renders. Notice that all these H2s are rendering flush left on my web, on my web page here, even though in my code I have them indented a bit. So I have them indented to help me as the developer organize the content. Now, how that displays on my web page, however, is up to the styles of the web page and later on, we'll specifically style this content using CSS. But good indentation in your code makes it enormously easier to read and maintain. Comments are self-explanatory. You'll want to use comments whenever needed to clarify and explain your code. You'll want to write all your HTML tags in lowercase. 10 or maybe it's been 20 years ago when I was learning and teaching HTML, we used all capital letters because that made the tag stick out a little bit more. Now, however, the current best practice is to make sure that all your tags are in lowercase all the time. You'll want to spell check your content. And by spell checking, the easiest way for me is to simply render the page, press Control A, Control C to copy it, and pop it in Word where you can Control V, paste, and then click the spell check button. Word obviously has one of the premier spell checking features on most computers. Some of our text editors also have spell checkers that you can use right in the text editor. But because we have both code and text in the same file, it's difficult to spell check inside the text editor itself. I also want you to validate all of your files all the time. We'll validate all of our HTML and all of our CSS. And we can do that by control A, control C, copying all the code, and then finding the validator 
which can be found at validator.w3.org and pasting our code into the validate by direct input box. You can also validate by the URL or validate by uploading the file. But when you check your code against the validation service, if there are errors, they will be listed and you can correct them. For example, you might forget a closing slash on a closing tag, or you might forget the tag altogether, or you might fat finger something and enter a tag that's nonsensical. Now, fortunately, Notepad++ also with its color coding helps alert you to these types of problems. But the validator is another really excellent check to make sure that your code is tight and has been entered correctly. If there are errors, you'll see them in red listed below.